This is Camp Meeting 2024. Culture, nurturing the God life and rebuking all disobedience. Fill us, fill us, Lord. Fill us, fill us, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. There's serious heat here. I want to congratulate um, Pastor Chintok and Pastor Sarah for the 15th camp meeting. And I want to appreciate all the senior pastors of God Life Assembly International and um, other in-house pastors of the God Life Assembly. Um, sons and daughters of the ministries and every God life. Well, please can we celebrate God. And uh, of course I want to celebrate God's servants that are here. Reverend H.M. And your dear wife Pastor Giba, good to see you. I wanted to trouble you yesterday but Mamo pleaded that we should allow you to rest. So I repented and I went to sleep. And it was such a great surprise to see Barista Ocholi with his wife Julia in the house. I think um, this should be about 18 years since we say face to face, you know. But yeah, yeah, since Abu, I think since we left. But I've been seeing his uh, trouble shooting on Facebook and other social media platforms. Good to see you and uh, Pastor Nee and uh, every other pastor, please, for the sake of time, God bless you. Good to see you. Please, let's celebrate Jesus. <laughs> Precious Lord, once again, we are setting aside, uh, step aside that you will reach out to us and engage the spirits of men here this morning in Jesus' name. Now, you know, please, let's be seated. God bless you. I have a tradition that I don't, um, I don't specifically carve out time to prepare for administration, right? Um, so that when you say, okay, I'm coming to speak, then I begin to take time to study, to go through commentaries and concordance, and to read and to pray. Most especially when I have couples of meetings, what I always do is to continue with my normal routine of study, meditation, prayer, you know, and fasting as the Lord will lead me. It's my normal routine. So I don't, I don't get um, steer up to do anything because I'm invited. <coughs> but the way the Lord normally does, <coughs> amen. The way the Lord uh, normally will do it for me is that I could be having maybe six meetings, and probably I have a meeting tomorrow, next tomorrow, next week, next month, and then I have another one six months too. He can wake me anytime, any moment, and start talking about the program that is coming up six months. And so when I was told about camp meetings, I think about two or three months, when I saw the invite, and I saw the topic culture, I smiled of course, but then I left it there. But one day he woke me up in the night and started a conversation and he says to me that this year camp meeting is going to be four camp meetings rebranded and presented in one. And right there in the spirit I began to see the brand new man of 2013. But before then I saw uh, separation, consecration, and infiltration of 2012. I saw the brand new man of 2013. Then I saw overcoming faith of 2018. And I saw war against Babylon of 2020. And the Lord began to say that there will be clash of swords and the battle of thrones. There will be the clash of civilizations. Because the Lord will come with full strength and his grace against the world system of ecumenism, of pluralism, of secularism, of hedonism, of existentialism, and every form of oppositions and philosophies of men that try to fight against the counsels of God upon the earth. So, 
I left it there because it didn't continue with the conversation and I continued my things. And my plan was that I'm going to come to camp probably on Thursday evening or Friday morning. But about two weeks ago, while I was sleeping, he began to speak. And when he finished talking, I knew that I have to be in camp meeting on the first day. And that I have to bring a word, even if it's for 15 minutes, in one of the first sessions. It's a simple question. And I don't want to assume that it's camp meeting, we all speak in tongues, pray in tongues, share grace in tongues, post on Facebook in tongues. Some people even call in tongues now. Somebody called me one day and I just picked the call. So I switched off the phone. Then he called me again. I switched it off. Then he called me the third time. He said, man of God, please don't switch it off. I'm just under fire. That's why I'm calling you in tongues. I said, but there's no interpretation. And so it is useless. <laughs> because you need to interpret what you are saying. I said, I didn't get the interpretation. So I couldn't connect with you. What I'm trying to say here is that I don't want to assume. Because let me tell you the truth. It is very possible for you to assume that you are a child of God and you are not. One of the reasons why the commandment of the Lord looks to you like a body is because the nature has not been touched. You see, sometimes I know the place of culture. But first thing first is the nature. Actually, you are a gala, right? See, you cannot begin to try to culture your child in a gala culture if he's not born by you, by your wife. If he's not having the nature, if he doesn't carry the genetic cord, does not carry your seed, it's going to be a violation. So before we even begin to talk about culture, let's ask whether we have the nature. Because the question is this. Hen eats corn. Egg doesn't eat corn. Egg doesn't eat corn. It is hen that eats corn. It is chicken that eats corn. What I'm saying is that have you been hatched? Why should we serve you corn when you are not hatched yet? In psychology, there are two forces that determine actions and inaction. It's the force of nature and the force of nurture. Another word for nurture is culture. That your nature is your genetic cord. And your nurture is the product of external factors. A theorist called George Herbert Mead talked about the concept of the I and the me. He said the I has to do with the genetic cord, and the me has to do with the product of external factors. That you have a dual status as a human being. There is the I dimension of you and the me dimension of you. I, Samson Ayuba. Right? I'm the son of Ayuba Abubakar. I'm from a Jabal local government, Kaduna State. There is a chromosome of my father in the inside of me. There's a genetic cord that I carry, and that is my I. But if you want to know the me, you will see the I that is tampered with Zaria environment. You will see the I that is tampered with um, Amadou Bello University. You will see the I that is tampered with sociology. You will even see the I that is tampered with ministry. Certain environmental factors. It's what determines the me. So sometimes when you begin to act, it's either you are acting from your personality, from your I, or you are acting from the me. If you act from the I, that is the real you. If you act from the me, it can be what is called dramaturgy in social interaction. Dramaturgy is what you do for you to be accepted by the norms and to socialize by the society. So you can pretend to be what you are not. 
So you can come to church and somebody match your leg and say, sorry, say, no, no, no problem. God bless you. That is not I. That is me. Because if you do it, it will look as if you are not part of the kingdom. He said, God is surely good unto Israel. But as for me, my foot nearly slipped away. Because I envy the prosperity of the wicked. And as he continued with the discourse, the psalm he says, he said, in iniquity, in vanity, have I washed my hands in innocence. That is to say, my cleanness, my consecration is useless. I have not seen the reward of it. He said, if I say it, I will have been judged as not belonging to the congregation of God. So in other words, I have said it in my heart, but I don't say it in my mouth. Now, as you are here, the first question we need to ask is that, are you one of us? So that we can go ahead to talk about culture. Because the reason why it is so hard... For God to be able to bring you into that environment. As the time, if I have opportunity of coming back again, I will show to us how that even social scientists have discovered that culture is the product of environment. If somebody says, if, if a Calabar woman comes here and begins to brag to a Lantan person now to say that the Tatarok person doesn't have, I mean, Tatarok people don't have soup. They don't have different kinds of leaves. That if you want to see soup, you have to come to Calabala. Ma, is a function of culture. It is a function of environment. The reason is because you are in the water Rhine area. So you have leaves. That the Hausa man built his house, a, a, a typical Hausa man in Jigawa or in Kebi, we build his house without any strong foundation. We just be carrying mud and be putting, be putting and be putting. It's not because the man is lazy, it's because the environment has permitted him to do so. That's why a natural Ijo boy knows how to swim, his environment. So when you find yourself in an environment, you want to conform. But you know that we are not called for conformity, we are called for transformation. And the problem here is that the reason why we are still finding it hard, you will come out to say that this one doesn't belong to us. How can somebody be selling uh, uh, miracle soap, miracle fish, miracle cooking gas, miracle water? And then it will shock you. It may not be in this house, but I will not be surprised that somebody can be coming to God Life Assembly and he will, he will go and buy it and he will put it on Facebook. We should not be castigating the body of Christ. The question is, what is happening? Is, have you really gotten it? Because what I sense in my spirit is that right now as we begin to talk, God is conducting a spiritual paternity test, a DNA test. The reason why you are so attracted to corruption may not be because of the environment, may be that in the first place, nature has not changed. Paul says, it is not I that live it, but Christ. He didn't say, it is not me. Because what Jesus come to handle is not the me, it's the I. It's to change the genetic code first. It's to change the nature. And when is in place, then there is a capacity. Pastor Chitra began talking about the fact that the inherent nature of God, the eternal life can be chalked because of the environment. But the first thing is that is there the eternal life first? Because you see, the eternal life is in category. I've told you, I think, was it last camp meeting or the camp meeting before last? That is like crude oil. Eternal life is like crude oil. At different levels of temperature, different dimensions will come out. But the first thing is, is the life there? Has he changed you? Have you met him? That's not, it's just a simple evangelistic message. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul, cleansing blood of the love? Are your garments spotless otherwise as snow? Are you washed? In the blood. In Revelation chapter 19, the Bible talks about the bride, the wife of the Lamb, that she will be covered with a fine robe, fine linen, white and clean. White is nature, clean is state. The issue is that you are black and we are trying to culture you. No, you have to be white first. We don't talk about cleanness, you have to be white. 
Why is nature? Because what we are going to have is religion and hypocrisy if nature is not changed. He called us to bear fruit, not to clone people. It's not cloning, it's reproduction. And there are several people in the house, in the body of Christ today, that are cloned. They have not encountered him. Oh, you don't know? Jesus said to the Samaritan woman, He says, you people, you Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we know. Sir, it is possible to worship what you do not know. You don't know it. You know what they call in house Ruambula? Ruambula ni. You don't know it. And God is not intimidated by this external show. The question is, have you met him? Some of you here, you have to be bold enough to confront yourself with this question. How did you, how did you become holy? How did you become holy? It will shock you. Some people cannot even tell you what it means to be born again. You see, there are basics that we used to have on campus fellowships and in our Sunday schools in those, those days. Some of our mainline churches that is lacking in most of the Pentecostal assemblies now. The basic concepts of salvation, assurance of salvation, justification by faith, sanctification, the gift of righteousness. So that people are running head the, the kind of jamboree that people are going into right now, talking about grace revolution, one say forever say, all these things are not necessary. Because people don't even understand the fundamentals first. After doing believers meeting for about three, four years, I decided to talk about law and grace. So I said, there's a difference between the law of God and the law of Moses. If you say we're not under law, we are talking about the law of Moses because we are under the law of grace. There's something called the law of grace. And I asked, okay, how did you know you are born again? It is believers meeting. It is called believers meeting. In believers meeting, we don't do anything evangelistic most of the times. In fact, sometimes we come for believers meeting, we may start gisting. When I first started, it may be in my parlor. We just start gisting. Before you know what's happening, we start praying. Then we start talking. And then we go into scripture. It's just believers meeting. There is no, there is no structure. After three, four years, then I decided to ask, how do you know you are born again? I called three people. Only one person was able to tell me what it means to be born again biblically. One person shocked me. If you see him praying, you will think he's a younger brother to the Holy Ghost. And when I ask, how do you know that you are born again? He said, because any time I receive it, I have a dream or a vision, it comes to pass. Then I say, it means that you are not as holy as Nostradamus, the man who knows tomorrow. Have you heard of Nostradamus? That was a man who spoke by, this, by, by, by divination. He, he, he predicted the Second World War. He even told about his death. He said he's going to die. And when he died, after about some days, after three days or so, that some people will come to steal his corpse so that they will take away his call to go and study it. And that a bullet will come from nowhere and hit one of them when he died. That was what he said. And it happened like that. So in that case, you see, it's because people do not understand the issue of nature. He says something about eternal life. Eternal life cannot be... See, when there's no eternal life, God can commit gifts and callings. When there's no culture, God can commit gifts and callings, but not eternal life. It is in his Paul that said, he says, the scripture said, except you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. It therefore means whatsoever that you can see without being born again is not the kingdom curriculum. Yeah. If you can have a wife without being born again, that's not the kingdom. If you can have a car without being born again, that's not the kingdom. Remember I said to you that it's a rebranding of four car meetings. I still remember in 2013 talking about the brand new man. I began to talk about what the gospel is. And I talked about, I remember Reverend Michelle also talked about new creation reality. And then Pastor Chito talked about the emergence of the brand new man. That the emergence is not just talking about born again experience. It's talking about a crop of people. 
And I remember that Sunday we rounded up talking about the class of civilization. That somebody spoke with God and God said, you are going to. He said, see, now, the blood of your brother is asking for vengeance. And when the man finished with God, he didn't even repent. He said, I'm out, I beg, I beg, I beg, that this thing is too grievous. Uh-uh, it's too much. Now anybody that see me will want to kill me. God said, no problem. I will protect you. In fact, anybody that kill you, I will require of your blood from him seven times. I will avenge of your blood seven times. In other words, God can protect a rebel. So if you come here and say, you've been faithful, Lord, <laughs> to the age is past. That is why your name, your name, Oshie Baba, is forevermore. I seen, I seen it is not enough that God delivered me from an accident. I want, I want to thank God for this ministry and for our Papa in the house, Pastor Chinto Ishaku. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will increase you and give you more grace, sir. I want to say to you that this house is a blessed house in case you don't know. <laughs> it looks as if it's, I'm the only one that God loves so much. <laughs> ben, I truly could say, you can't tell God how much you love him by speaking about the things he has done for you. There's something... For God so loved the world, but there's something about for those who love him and walk according to his purpose. God can protect the rebel. And the man left the presence of God. Chapter 13. You know what I call chapter 13? Brand new man. He left the presence of God. Then he went to his wife. He went into his wife. That's his King James language. And she gave birth to a son. And he named him Enoch. So if our major emphasis is the barren will receive their children, you don't need to come to the presence of God to receive children. Because how about can give children? Are we saying that that is not enough? But what is the gospel? That's my question. Because the problem is that many people have not been transformed in the body. So many people are looking for gifts. They are looking for comfort. Somebody says, many people are coming to the body of Christ, coming to the church, for them to be improved. Meanwhile, the desire of God is not to improve you, but to remove you. It's nature. Besides, your dogs and your chickens, are they in the presence of God? I don't know giving birth. So the first question here is, have you met him? I don't want to assume that we are all on the same page. Forget about the fact that you know how to speak in tongues. The other person I asked, this one said, if he had a dream, it will come to pass. The other one said, I, I, I know that I'm born again now because what I used to do before, I don't do it again. Immediately she said that I knew that it was fornication. I say. I say, like what? He <laughs> say, uh, 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 I say, like what? Don't say it. We are in the house of God, you know. She so say, and like uh, I used to, uh, I used to sleep with men before, but now I don't sleep. I say, I know, I know what you're talking about. Say, well, excuse me. In that case, we need to go out and learn what it means to be born again from outside people. Those ones that don't even shake hands with men. In fact, they even cover their eyes so that somebody will not see them and fall because of lust. So if it's about good works, because there are some of us here that you assume you are born again, but you are actually the product of a me. The eye has not changed. The product of me. Some of us here, you are the product of the discipline of your father and your mother. 
You have not met Christ. You have not met him. Some of us right now are boasting about our morality. And there are some people that, there are some people that, that we are rough before. Some Barak boys. But there are people that we are quiet, morally excellent. But you don't know the nature. If you want to understand the nature of sin, if you want to understand the evil of evil, hmm? look at the Western world. I've worked with them before when I was doing research work. They, they, they parade themselves as mothers of integrity. There's even something that is called, according to the world, best practice. Standard world. I said, who, who put the standard? If you see Americans and Britons, they, 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 you see as if they are the purest people on earth. The most terrible set of people. Corruption. People that want to kill all the African, I mean black race. People that go to lab to do things. Even this grand that you are talking about. Since when I was working as a researcher, I understand the issue of um, NGO. That they give you one million dollars as a grant. If you understand the, the international politics behind that. And all of us, some of you now are annoyed. Most of you are those who are working with NGOs. But you know what? Now the reality is coming out. That those guys have not made Christ. That's something that the angel said to Joseph. He said, do not be afraid to take your wife. For the holy thing that she carries is from the Lord. She shall give birth to a child and you will name him Jesus for he will save his people from sin. From sin. It's only Jesus that can save from sin. Not ideology of men. See the people that have been claiming that they are pure. Right now, they are marrying cats. They are marrying, somebody married her duvet. I'm telling you, Aduve. She married Aduve. Somebody married an idol, her idol, baby doll. So, so one married her cat. A sister sent me from Canada. <laughs> let me let me speak with her with her with her slang. Let me speak with her phonetics. I, I saw one woman. She came out. Say. Uh, you know, I, I'm not going to raise charges uh, against anything, but I'm just trying to call the attention of the government to this matter because I believe that it's a form of stigmatization and discrimination because, you know, uh, uh, my, my son actually identified himself as a card. He, he said he's a card. And then he, he felt sick, and I took him to the veterinary doctor, and the veterinary doctor said that, that he cannot treat him because he doesn't have the physiology and the anatomy of a cat. Uh, and, but I think that is wrong because he identified himself as a card. So I'm just calling on the... It's a matter of time, sir. It is environment that makes you think that somebody has the nature of God. People can be cultured so they will conform, not transform. Right now, Satan doesn't have any tactics again. He's bringing out himself. So, was it David Cameron then that could say to us that if you do not agree to sign the same-sex marriage bill, they will stop bringing grant to Nigeria, right? If you remember, Senator David Mark was the one then that said, to hell with your grant. Because right now, they are coming out. If time permit me, I will talk about the LGBTQ movement. Right now, they are bringing it out clearly. Because you see, sin cannot hide, sir. It's a matter of time. That's why in the last day, when there's going to be great tribulation, there's going to be great plagues and the bars from the seven angels that will come. The Bible will say to us that yet men will refuse to repent, they will curse the Lord. Because when you become a mature sinner, you know, the other day I was saying that sometimes people think that boldness is the evidence of truth. But sometimes boldness can be the expression of mature sin. When you become mature in iniquity, you can be bold. A church called me to come and speak about LGBTQ some days ago. And I was speaking. I said, some of you now will be saying, God forbid, God forbid that I will sleep with a woman. No, you don't know, sir. You are, you are having premarital sex. 
And you're saying, God forbid, you don't have strength already. Sin grows. It's a progression. That's what is called the evolution in sin. It's the right time for me to announce that my book is out. It's called the true evolution. Don't, don't, hey. I've preached a message before. I call it holy there. You know, you know this one that I praise the Lord. But because the brother hurt you yesterday, you are finding it hard to say hallelujah. That is a seat of rebellion. Hold it. If you, oh my God. Oh my God. You cannot do that unless that, that nature is changed. You, you will feel it. You cannot be comfortable. It's like a change of habitation. I've not been talking to your brother in church for the past three months and you're still comfortable. You see, there are certain things that people will do. You say, eh, it's maybe it's because of this, it's because of that, it's because of this, it's because of that. But at the point, there are things you will see, you will start asking, is this really my child? Let, let, let me give you an example. Sometimes when our children do things, they say an apple doesn't fall uh, far, far from the tree, right? When we see our children sometimes, truly, even though we pretend that we are parents and we want to discipline, we are seeing ourselves. And, um, but the, of course, we know that we cannot just assume that it's ourselves, so we allow them like that. Because just as we are also trained by our parents, we train them too. Foolishness is locked up in the child. The road of correction, we chase it out. So at least we know where to talk, where to shout, where to keep quiet, where to pray. And sometimes you look at the child and say, well, it's just a child, right? But there's something that your child could do. And you start looking at your wife. Is he my son? Are you hearing me? Most especially those of you that don't trust your wives. Right now, there are certain things we look at in the life of people that claim to be believers. We need to ask. We need to go and do DNA tests. And I tell you right now, there is a spiritual DNA test that is going on by the Holy Ghost. Because one of the things he's going to do is he's going to convince men of sin. And that sin is not action. That sin is nature. As we are seated right there, please, I plead with you. When we make the altar call rush out here, and we're not going to close our eyes. Because when people close their eyes before you give your life to Jesus, when nobody is seeing you, you betray him. What else should someone be very bold of, confident of doing than receiving Jesus? Than giving your life to Christ. You know you are not. Forget about this thing that you claim. Oh my. I've said it severally and I still want to say it. That boldness in the absence of danger is useless. You can't claim that you are not a thief when there's no provision for you to steal. You come here and you're talking about the fact that you never slept with a woman. Sir, you have never seen a girl naked in your room and she lock up the door. Forget it. All the time somebody used to be around. I heard it from a man of God. He said there's a difference between overcome and escape. Some of you have been escaping. You have never overcome anything. Because you know, what is overcome? I said it during 2018. Overcome means something comes then you go over. You have never gone over anything. Let me use it the way uh, Apostle Ephraim said it. Okay, this girl came to your room and you are playing this R&B song. Everywhere was romantic and there's, let me add my own, blue light and red light. And gradually she left the couch and came and sat on the bed. Then you started shifting clothes and she didn't know unconsciously she was also shifting. Then all of a sudden you started looking at your eyeballs. And then your face began to go down. 
and your leaves was coming out. And then she started breathing hard. Then her brother received a touch from the Holy Ghost. Shaka penne mo kovala na imeno ya. Is he brojo, brojo, brojo? As he's speaking in tongues, kimo kumbra gadia, maka jo, jo, maka ntu ba shaka da jo, jo. And then he has a law for interpretation. He said, jo, jo, jo. And the sensitive brother stood up and ran to your house and knocked the door. You didn't want to open the door, but he continued as a persistent brother. Then you opened the door. Then he came in. And then sat between you and the sister. Then changed the Arab song and put Chris Oya Kilome. And after some times, the strength and the power of the spirit of immorality began to go down. Then the sister said, I think I want to go. Then she left, and then you and the brother prayed. Then you come to church and say, the Lord help me and overcome. You didn't overcome, you escaped. Do you really have the strength? Have we met him? I, I'm holding myself not to go into culture. <laughs> I'm holding myself. I'm holding myself. Because some of us are still friendly to these things. Our test board has not changed. Something has not happened to us. There's need for a reconfiguration. It's not cloning. Let me, let me give us an example with two, three scriptures, then we pray. Bow your heads again. Somebody may be here and you are saying, but I, I think, I thought I gave my life to Christ, but the way you are speaking now, do I really? The fact that you are doubting means that you have not. Of course, I know the place of discipleship where some of us need to understand the assurance of salvation and what it means to be born again. It's not about uh, um, your works. It's about what Christ has done. You have to believe the authenticity and the validity of God's word. If the Lord says you are forgiven, you are forgiven. But truly you know. See, something happened. And I know he touched me and made me whole. You will know it. You will know it. All right. Look at Matthew chapter 24, verse, from verse 14. We do a little Bible study in Matthew chapter 24, and then we look at John chapter 4, Jesus with the Samaritan woman, and then we pray. Just to emphasize on the fact that it's very possible for you to be part of the activities in the body, but you are not actually a member of the body. Some people came to Israel, came back to Israel after the captivity. They were the descendants of priests, but their name were not found in the genealogy. So they were kept from priestly activity because they were seen as corrupted. Can you trace your genealogy? Can you trace it? Some people are still apologetic and friendly. And defending. When we say somebody say he, he, he became born again from his mother's womb. And we say no, 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 no. no. Some people are still fighting. The possibility is that you yourself may not have met him. Because there is a way you will know. See, when you meet your brother, he doesn't say Sibolet. He says Shibolet. You will know. It's a spirit thing. Deep collect to Deep. Look at what happened in Matthew chapter 24 from verse 14. Is, are we there? Oh, good. And this gospel of the kingdom, no, 22, sorry. Did I say 24? Sorry, 22. 22. Because we are, we are excusing a lot of things in the name of maturity. That people are not matured. We know it, sir. 
Somebody was, I don't know, somebody was convicted in the United States of America. I think a 14 year old girl that killed her cousin. Have you heard that? They judged her. They said she's not a girl. Because she killed her with, uh, I think, using, she suffocated her with, with a pillow and made sure that there was no any trace. They just said for her to be able to do that, it means she's matured. We excuse a lot of things. And we say, no. Demonic things. And people have learned language. I know one thing about artificial intelligence is trying to substitute spiritual intelligence. With artificial intelligence, now you are going to have a lot of fake ministers because you understand the slogans and the jargons of the judge. Anything you want to hear, they will tell you. But they've never experienced him. He said, every man of God has a weakness. You slept with a woman, slept with her daughter. The daughter became pregnant. The woman became pregnant. You killed the daughter. You are still a man of God. No, we should ask, who born you? The first thing first. You see, nature, nature gravitates around culture. The nature of fish makes you to be able to exist in water. So naturally, if it takes away the sheep from its environment, you have demobilized it. Are you hearing me? If you are truly born again, the moment you are leaving the environment, you will know. Yes. A man that was a prototype of grace, even though he was under the law. David, cast me not away from your presence, O God. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of our salvation. There's something that the seed of God does in a man. Some of you have zero shock absorbers. You know shock absorbers, right? You know there are some cars that uh, if you enter, your body will tell you. Most especially if you are going from Jaws to Abuja. But there are some cars, they are so casual, they are like snakes. When they enter potholes, you won't feel anything. And some of us, unfortunately, in the negative, you have shock as over for sin. You beat your wife, you take her in the microphone. We need to ask these questions. Have you met him? We are excusing a lot of things. And so people are coming through the back door. And we say, no, it is a mistake. Everybody has his own mistake. But no, sir, let's ask. You are still comfortable lying against a brother. Look at what happened. Somebody, ah, give me that Matthew 22 verse. What you? Even me as I'm speaking this morning, I know that it's Jesus that is compelling me. Because naturally I want to do my kind of, the, the kind of teachings and preachings I do. But he said to me, don't go too far. Start. And even if you are born again and you know you are enjoying life, you must know this, that the first thing to do is to, because I know some of us, by the time we finish here, you will go out there and say, you see the issue is the issue of culture. And culture means discipleship. The person is not born again, sir. Understand that this is the first place to start. When I was in the Abyss area, I fought with a lot of lecturers. Because many of them were proud, arrogant. They would come to me then as the FCS president and be attacking my people. Okay, this person is doing this. This person is doing this. And I will say to them, sir, no. You see, there are different kinds of experiences and exposure. And people are coming from different backgrounds. Let's see how we can have a common ground of Christ. And then we see where we can build it from there. And they will say, no, no. You are compromising. One day I look at a professor and I say, sir, your children are still in staff school. Wait first. You think your children are born again? They are not. I discipline my children as God gives me grace. But I'm always asking, Lord, let them meet you. Let them meet you. Some of our children, are, they don't know God. They are afraid of us. Have you heard the story of the boy that the father said, Lay down! He stood, said, Lay down! Then he flogged him. And then he knelt down. Well, me, me, I know, say, in my heart, I'm standing. 
Do you understand? Some of our children are standing, they are not kneeling down. They are standing in their hearts. Because they come home by 6 p.m. The Bible said this is the true light that lighted the whole world. If you have not brought out the gospel as it is, there must be some level of differentiation and integration. You have to differentiate first what the gospel is. The spiritual calculus. You must differentiate it first. This is the gospel. Take it away from African morality. Take it away from your tribal culture. Take it away from your discipline. Take it away from fear of punishment. You do not commit fornication, not because you are born again, you are afraid of HIV. You have to separate it. Do you have the fear of God? Look at it. Oh, okay. That's where we have to start from. Can you give me from verse, verse 1? Verse 1. All right. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son. Yes. And sent forth his servants to call them that were bidding to the wedding. And they will not come. Are you hearing me? It is easy to deal with the people that refuse to come. Than people that came and want to do their own things. There are people in church, their heart is in the beer parlor. There are people in the beer parlor, their heart is in church. And so, oh my God, when you meet people in beer parlors and in brutels, whose heart are in the church, they are always crying. But there are people in church, their heart is there. That's why you don't judge externally. This one did not come. I remember my father of blessed memory. Of course, in his uh, limited theological understanding of <laughs> my father will not go to church. He doesn't take communion. My father was, he crafted his own holiness. He judged himself by himself. Not according to the word of God, of course. No. He said, how can I go to take holy communion? I'm still drinking bottles. See, all those men that are going, I don't understand. They don't have respect for God. So him is respect. He can't. Even the church, he doesn't go. On Christmas Day, my father will prepare stew for us. All of us will go to church. The only day my father will go to church that time, before he gave his life to Christ. It's New Year Day. To go and thank the Lord. And that this, all the mountain matters on that day, you see. Nimere, me ne ne zen you are Allah. Then ya come in life here. I want to shake her up. Mutani de ya was to me gamuzu wagidan gaskia. Nimere. So he will just come and do that. And after that, he will go back. Some of those people, they have fear for God, not in the correct way. They will not do it. So this one did not come. Now go on. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidding. Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings, and key and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it and went their ways. One to his farm, another to his merchandise. Go on. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. Go on. This one is like Boko Haram people. But you know what? The way God sees. There are people that God, there are Boko Haram people that God esteem higher than some people in church. I will explain to us. But when the king had thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and born of their city. Go on. Then said he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which we are bidding were not worthy. God will always insist. 
He will not throw away the party. Some people must. And I tell you, this offer of eternal life, God has placed it. Somebody must enter. Are you hearing me? And, and I said to us, Hukaba, he may no cabrina satina bahai. There are some of you here, people are trying to dissuade you. One day the Lord said to me, people saying that you are taking it too much. Your emphasis on these things is too much. And the Lord said to me, don't hear them because they assume they know what you are looking for. They don't know it. Some people will enter into these things. And you can make your decisions. Go ye therefore into the highways and as many as ye shall find. Beat to the marriage. There are people that were originally called. Are you hearing me? They may not be part of this feast. And that's what I'm saying to people whom you may be as if you are at the backside of the mountain. Just concentrate and focus. You see, these things we are seeing is not the real thing. They are still introductions. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found. But, and, and the wedding was furnished with guests. Baba was the one that sang the song. I mean, it was the one that said it. I think one of the speaks. He said, you can come the way you are, but you can remain the way you are. He said, come unto me, O ye that are heavy laden, and now we what? You don't try to take away the heavy laden before you come. You come with the heavy laden. Then he will give you rest. But of course, remember, he said, take my yoke upon you. For my yoke is light and easy. Then he said, what? Learn of me, and ye shall find rest for your soul. When you first of all come, he will take away the burden and give you rest. That is the change of nature. Then where your soul is going to find rest, that is discipleship. There is a rest that is given and a rest that is found. But first of all, let's give you the rest. I hope you know when we are talking about culture, the prototype of the culture is in Zion. But you cannot get to Zion until you are a part of Israel. And that's what I'm talking about this morning. Are you one of the members of the tribe first? And when the king came in to see the guest, right? He saw there a man which hath not on a wedding garment. How did he be the security, sir? He came in, he was not having the wedding garment. And now look at, look at. And he said unto him, Friend, how comest thou in Hita, not having a wedding garment? And he was what? Now I just imagine that before the king came. There was small, small chops. There were zobo, samosa, and they were eating. And the man was also eating. They were dancing, he was also dancing. And some of them will look at him and say, ah, but Oga, why are you dressed like this? He said, leave me, don't judge me, don't judge me. It's in the heart, it's in the heart. My sin, past, present, future, forgiven. No, no, sir. We are not talking about your sin not forgiven. We are saying, but have you actually gotten the garment? Because let's have the garment first, then we can talk about sport. Yes. If you start talking about the sport, that is hypocrisy. Because righteousness is an instituted gift. Holiness is the practicing of righteousness by the enablement of the righteousness that you have received. So, the, the garment, sir. So, leave me alone. Leave me alone. All of us have our shortcomings. But, sir, it's not a matter of shortcoming. Your own is that you don't have garment. It's not as if we say that the garment is not long enough. No, it's, you don't have it. You say, leave me alone. Until the king finally came in. Could it be that you have been among us here, you are dancing and singing with us, but that they are going to be speechless? When we were in secondary school, in one of the FCS songs we used to sing, How is your inner man? 
And how is your prayer line? How much of the word of God do you have in your life? Oh, you are just busy for him. Busy singing and dancing. Busy jumping and playing. In the house of the Lord. In the house of the Lord. Say, do you really know the Lord? Say, do you really know the Lord? Do you really know the Lord? Oh, you are just busy for him. So, you, 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 you belong to a unit. You even have your tight cut. I believe, and there are some churches that say they are not going to bury you unless you are a tighter. In fact, some they used to bury you with your cat, tight cat, so that they can tell God that this is my good work. Uh, do you know that that is called spiritual bribery? And that is the premise of every false religion. That there is something you can do to buy your salvation. Charles Spurgeon says, the only contribution you can make for your salvation is your sin that make it necessary. The fact that you are thinking that there is something you can do to even win his approval. I tell you, when you meet him face to face, you'll be speechless. You, see, you can argue with pastor, you can argue with members, you can argue with everybody, but when he meets you, you'll be speechless. That's why some years ago when somebody said that she went to heaven and went to hell and she saw Jesus and then, and then he said that she knows his earring, that she knows his attachment and then she was talking with Jesus and then she did something and Jesus was annoyed. Then he hit her head on the wall. I said, no, it was not Jesus you met. <laughs> See, John that was laying on the bosom of Jesus, when he saw the glorified Christ, he fell down as dead. But even before he was glorified, he just turned and looked at Peter. Peter was convicted. If God look at you, even you, you'll be speechless. All this noise you are making. And one of the ways I know that people be, are having in contact with God, every, the more you encounter, the more your quietness. The empty verses make the loudest noise. When I see people showcasing things that they do, there is no depth. Any tree that the root can be seen outside will soon fall. Everything about you is in the Facebook. The secret place. I don't know who was praying, who was videoing. Pastor Francis said, can you just imagine that you go to labor room, your wife is giving birth, then you are on live on Facebook. My wife is giving birth to... Oh. Like the Oibo people. You'll be speechless. Can you stand when he comes? Can you stand? Let's look at the Samaritan woman. I want to show to us the possibility of being here but not with us. And no matter what we try to do, is either we are going to leave you behind or you will fight us when we talk about culture. Because you know there's something about the seat of God. If there is a seat there, no matter how you are trying to fight it, your conscience will tell you that like, the conviction will be there. Say, no, it's true. That's why Paul said we can do nothing against the truth before the truth. And you remember, is it 2019? Tabernacle of David. I said to us, you just shout mercy. You don't fight it. When you see men fighting righteousness, when you see men fighting perfection, something is wrong. Because every child of God doesn't argue. That was the day I left my people in prayer. I said, pray and ask the Lord. Lord, in the name of Jesus, do not spare me. Go, oh God. Go on, go on, go on. Kill this rascal. Call the flesh. Don't spare me. Don't even stop because of my shout and because of my cry. Because everyone born of God loves the truth. Everyone born of God loves the truth. It's your flesh that hates it. You may fight it when you go back to your closet, you cry. But that's when you have the seat. Now look at this woman. They are coming the woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, give me to, to drink. What did she say? For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. 
Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask a drink of me, which I am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. And so many of us are still in this place. We have this dichotomy. Denominational divisions. Doctrinal divisions. But what he comes to do here is not a matter of the Jew or the Samaritans. That will not permit me to talk about how we come to have the Samaritans as a misrace. Because it was after their captivity in Assyria. The northern kingdom was, I mean, was under captivity in Assyria and the southern kingdom was in Babylon. When the northern kingdom finally came, they found themselves in Assyria. But then the king of Assyria has brought all manner of people, Egyptians, Hittites, and all manner of Gentiles in Samaria. And when they came, they intermarried with them. So they were no pure blood. And so the Jews that came from Babylon and settled in Jerusalem are seeing those people as not real Jews. If an average Jew will wake up in the morning and we pray three prayers and give thanksgiving to God. Father, thank you for not making me a leper. Thank you for not making me a woman. And thank you for not making me a Samaritan. That was the average thanksgiving of a Jew. They see Jews as dirty. But the Bible says concerning Jesus, Jesus was to go to Galilee, but he needed to go through Samaria. And I've said this somewhere that needed to go to Samaria is not a matter of geographical constraint. It's a matter of spiritual compassion because there was somebody with hunger that was pulling him. The harlot who was tired. There are sinners that are tired and they want to come in. There are some of you that are tired and want to go out. I'm telling the truth. And when he met her, this was their conversation. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that said to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and would have given thee living water. Go on. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Is it because they are not on the same page? He is trying to culture her, but his nature has not been changed. People will not understand what you are saying. Go on. Are thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us this the way, and drank there of himself, and his children, and his cattle? Go on. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Listen to me. You see, the woman was parading herself with the monuments of God's interaction with the people of Israel. Because at that time, the northern kingdom in Samaria had all the tokens of God's interaction with Israel. This place, this, this, this place called Sychar is the same place called Suku, and it's the variant of the word Shechem. That was where Sarah was buried. That was where Joshua made the great declaration, Choose ye this day whom ye will serve. So they have these monuments, they have these tokens as memorials of God's engagement with Israel. And so they are looking at the Jews. When the Jews in Jerusalem are saying to them that you are Samaritans, you are not actually pure Jews, they are telling them, but where you can see we have the monuments. The well of Jacob is there. The mountain is there. Every other thing you can talk of is there. And I hear some people saying that we are the first church. That in fact we have the history and the documentation of the early church. It's not like that, sir. Because you can be like the Samaritan woman. Some of our parents, that's their bane. And some of us have become victims of such things. Most of our parents introduce us to Christ, but they don't know how far we can go. My mother bought me my Bible in 1995, Naira, New International Version. After two years, I gave my life to Christ. When I began to speak in tongues, she became uncomfortable. They will take you to the temple, but they will not want you to remain in the temple. My father looked at me one day and said, what kind of prayer is this? <laughs> so you'll be shouting and shouting as if you are prophets of Baal. It's God not hearing. And they will say to you that before they give birth to you, we have been doing these things. That's the Samaritan woman. Some of you, you must have found yourself in camp meeting and you are looking at us and saying, let me just see what they are doing. Because in Nagama now, I'll just go back to my church. I cannot go to a church that I'm older than. You are a Samaritan woman. And you hear what Jesus said concerning that. Your nature has not been changed. 
You grew up and you see the interactions of God with your grandfathers. You don't know him. You have not met him. You have seen the mountain. You have seen the well of Jacob. But you don't know. You don't have the interactions of Jacob with God. You don't. And I want to speak to those of you that are pastor kids. PK. You don't become born again by proxy. You don't become born again by extension. As many that believe in the gift and power to become sons of God. There are no grand sons of God. All of us are sons. You must meet him on your own. If I'm born again, my daughter doesn't become the grandchild of Jesus. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. You will thirst again. And that's one thing that ministers have to really understand these days. We have to go back to the basis. Because we have been giving people water and they are thirsty again. They are thirsty again. Of recent, I was speaking about the third world gospel, the third world country's gospel. Most of what we are preaching is a third world country gospel. We are still under a heavy dose of colonialism. That's why the pulpit in Canada is more appealing than the pulpit in Kano. It's colonial mentality. And many ministers of the gospel, if they leave this country and go to Dubai, they will lose their ministry because there's no message. You are telling people that you can have food to eat. They don't, they don't like food there. It's third world country gospel. Because people are in need, so we tell Lord our... We, we don't know what the gospel is. What we are doing is poverty alleviation program. And that's why people are still thirsty. They are thirsty, sir. It's a miracle receiving faith. No miracle giving faith, as he said. So every time they come, I want to receive. I will go to Jacob as I round up. If you check the gospel, you discover there was a place I tried to find it out, but I couldn't. Where Jesus healed a man and the man went his way. That I was reading the scripture. I think the blind man. You see a blind man or a leper. And the Bible said the man went his way. Then I just went his way. What? He went his way. And the Lord said to me, I can heal you and you can go on your way. But if I save you, you won't go on your way. He healed the man. Later he met him and he said to the man, see to it that you sin no more. So that something worse will not come. So he healed him without him being delivered. That's... I may touch Matthew chapter 5 if I have an opportunity of coming back again. So that we look at the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes. The attitude that should be. You see that in that Matthew chapter 5, the Bible says that Jesus, when he saw the multitude, hmm? when he saw the multitude, the Bible says he went up to the mountain. And when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, and the Lord says, if you elevate the bar, disciples will come. Don't be afraid of teaching this, sir. Disciples will come. Disciples will always leave the valley, they will come to the mountain. There are things that only disciples that can hear. It's a postgraduate school. Because, like I said it before, if I look at Pastor Teve and I come to see Pastor Chinto, Kambalai, I was in Makodi. Did you see Pastor Teve? God has so much blessed him. My God! Wow! The first thing that an average Christian is thinking of is did you see the kind of car he's riding? Did you see the kind of house he's having? But then if I say, not the kind of his hunger eh, and thirst, because the Bible says, blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness. You'll be disappointed. What Jesus called blessed, look at, that blessed are those that mourn. Yeah. And that mourning is not that somebody die you are mourning. It's that you look at God, and you look at yourself, and you do not see a replication. And you begin to mourn. That's why the original text says, Blessed are those that move, but they shall be comforted. The word comforted there is that they shall be invited into union and approval and communion with what they are looking for. Morning! I read Jesus stood up and silenced the storm and said, Oh, you men of little faith. And these guys look at him. They didn't respond to him. What did they say? They said, Ah, what manner of man is this? That even the storms will respect him. And Jesus said to me, what they did not understand is that that's the manner of men they are supposed to be. Anytime you say, what manner of man is this? Jesus is saying, the manner of man that you are supposed to be. 
Jesus, you are the light of the world, Jesus. You are the hope of creation, Jesus. More than all this, you are. And then he look at you and he said, Shegun, you are the light of the world. That is it. He said to me, don't only celebrate me as your hero. See me as your mirror. Yeah. That's the only way we are going to begin to submit ourselves for culturing. When that nature comes, you will thirst again. Please, let's get the real water of life. Let's drink from it. Because it will keep springing. It will keep springing. One thing we need is that when you have it, there will be a desire. There will be hunger. There will be further clothing with our tabernacle which is in the heavens. Not that we are naked. No! Something is wrong. We don't rest beggars and parasites. If you remember 2015 on Eagle's Wings, I said to us that you cannot go to Alaba Market or go to Abba Market or you go to Central Market or you go to Terminus and then you hear people say, we see signboards there and you see Chibike and children. Children don't do enterprise. It's Chibike and sons. You will thirst again. Are you not thirsty? Oh God, admission, admission. Then he gave you admission. Then exams. You now bring your cart and your barrel, they were anointed. Then after, Lord, Lord, let me say to that. I just want to say to that. I just want to say to Lord. It's Lord, I want to say to And many sisters have married, they say to the anointed to have said to Then children. Then let me have a car. Let me have my own house. Because an average Nigerian, when you have a house, you have a car, you intimidate everybody around you. Then you die and you go to heaven. That's all. That is if you make it. You will thirst again. And some people have built ministry around this lack. So I pray for you today. I cast out devil because you are eating Amala in dream. The next day you come, it's not Amala now, you are eating Spondedian. How can we praise into eternal life like this? The reason is because we are not culturing men. In fact, in the first place, we are not allowed them to take the nature of God. Because if you have the nature, there is going to be this hunger. How do, how, how do babies know that they can suck milk? It's follow come. It's nature. But there are things that are called emotions in psychology. They can be determined by external factors. But what are called drive, they are innate. It's innate. Have you watched Tazan? He has not met a lady before. The moment he saw her, what told him? Who taught him how he could be attracted? It's nature. Deep call it unto deep. You'll be able to be with us at the same pedestal. As we cry unto God for fullness, if you have this seed. But let's query it first. Have you been admitted? If you, if you discover that your Christianity has always been the cry of lack, I say to my people, anytime you discover that you cry for anything, then you need to cry. The major reason why you cry is not because you don't have food to eat. It's not because you don't have a car. It's not because you don't have a husband. If you are crying that you do not have a husband, it means you should cry. Why must you cry? You should cry because you are crying for nonsense. The major reason why you should cry is that you are crying for what you are not supposed to cry for. So you look at yourself and say, oh God, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not even that I don't have food that is making me to cry. I'm crying that lack of food is disturbing me. It's for freedom that you have been set free. Stand firm right now and see, make sure that you are not enslaved by the yoke of slavery again, by the elements of this world. But you have been in the body of Christ and we have been massaging your needs. Everything about you is what you can get. Maybe you have not taken that water because Jesus said, if you drink of it, you will not thirst again. 
this task, this task, this constant task you are having, is not an evidence that you have not taken the water. But whoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in, the, in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. A well is the salvation. Springing, 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 springing to everlasting life. Let's go forward because of time. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not. Let her come hither to draw. Go on. Jesus said unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. From a Jew, she says, Sir, it's honor. It's honor. That's a progress. But you don't stop there. There are many ministers of the gospel. All we are looking for is honor. The honor people give us doesn't change them. Then go on. I'm not saying it's bad. It's Jesus said, go call your husband. Go on, the next one. For thou hast... Okay, she says she doesn't have a husband. She says, for thou hast had five husbands, and whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that says thou truly. Okay, in that says thou truly. The woman said unto him, sir, I perceive that thou art a... from honor to recognizing gifts. We cannot build nature around gifting, sir. The woman didn't still change. She saw a Jew. She saw a sir. She saw a prophet. She did not change. Many people have been interacting and have been facing gifts. They have been seeing prophets. They have not seen Christ yet. They have been seeing apostles. They have not seen Christ yet. And nature cannot be dealt with by gifts. This can deal with issues, but it can't deal with nature. Men of God can deal with your environment, but it's only God that can deal with your nature. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and yet say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Go on. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe it, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Go on. Ye worship ye, know not what we know that we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. Now, the issue is you don't know what you worship, you can't tell. I ran up with Jacob, time we not going there. But you remember when Jacob found himself at Bethel? What did the Bible say? He had a dream, and then he saw a ladder from heaven. The ladder actually came from heaven down to earth. But then the angels were not descending from heaven. They were ascending from the earth to the heavens. It was an invitation for a communion. It's an invitation for an engagement. So the man saw it. He had a revelation. But he was not changed. If you go back to John chapter 4, you discover that when Jesus Christ says, I am he, when he says he is the Christ, that was when she dropped her, her junk and she went. Because it is only by the revelation of Christ that people are changed. It's not by gifts. This man saw revelation. When he woke up in the morning, what did he say? He said, ah, surely God is here. And I do not know. Then he said, this must be the house of God. It's the gate of heaven. Slogan. When you hear a man talk like that, you think as if you know God. What do you think? Do you know the meaning of gate of heaven? This is a portal. That is one of the apostolic jargons, right? This is a portal. Man, this is the house of God. This is an altar. He has seen some dimensions of God and some alignments. What did the Lord say to him? He was inviting him. If you walk with me, I will bless you. I will bring you into the blessing that I blessed your grandfather Abraham and Isaac. When the Lord finished talking to him, what did he say? He said, if thou will keep me in my going and bring me back safely, and you will give me clothes, raiment, and food, then you will be my God. It means, for now, you are not. And if you travel to John, to Matthew chapter 6, you understand. He said, this thing the Gentiles think of, what to eat and what to drink. So that was what Jacob was saying. 
For now, this is the issue. If you do this, you will be my God. And immediately he finished, that encounter, he finished with that encounter. What did he do? He raised a monument, a pillar, and he put oil. That's not an altar. There was no blood. There's no blood. When you bring prophet offering and seed offering, you are actually raising a pillar. It is good. It's a memorial. You are trying to say, God has met with me here. So you bring a prophet offering, you bring a seed because of what the Lord has done, but that's not an altar. Because at altar you die. What you take to altar is blood. It is at Penel that he raised an altar. And that was the first time after Penel that he raised an altar. And he called the altar what? El Elohi Israel, the God of the house of Israel. Now, he's my God. Somebody hearing me? Have you met him? Is he your God? Can we talk about culture? Are you ready for culture? Is your nature change? Bow your heads, let's pray. If you are here and you know you cannot really say that you're born again, that you have met with Jesus. Will you want to call me so that we pray with you? Don't need to be ashamed. There's no greater call than this. It's the greatest call. It's the greatest miracle. Some of you have assumed that you have met him because you grew up in a Christian family. Your parents raised you. They've been taking you to church since when you were small. But you cannot really say that you have had an encounter with the Lord that you have met him. That you know him. And he knows you. Please, I want to pray with you. Quickly, quickly. It will reduce the work. To reduce the labor. God bless you. Man. To reduce the labor. Now don't pour water on the rock. I'm still waiting for you. Still waiting for you. Can we, can we begin to pray? Right to the foundations of darkness. Command that the yokes of sin be broken. The power of dogma and tradition be broken. Let men be released into this harvest. Ask the Lord. Pray. Forget about your good works. This is when the journey is starting. There's something the Lord assured me. He said, as many that are coming to him in this camp meeting, there's going to be an unusual speed. Believe you me. Believe you me. In the next three years, you will not believe it. 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 What you will see in these lives. Just talk to him. Tell him, Lord, I'm ready. Some of you, the Lord has been tracing you for a long time. And some of you, you have crafted your own righteousness like my father. And you wanted to take away the heavy laden before you come. But now you have the grace and strength to come. There are still people. There are still people. Can I hear some incense in the house? Can I hear prayer? Pray. Pray. The enemy is afraid of something like this. He's afraid. Somebody needs to walk out of Satan this morning. Comante Capoli Nefa Santa Hebra. The entrance of your world give it light and 
and understanding to the simple. Kemo kotobo shataboria rapanda sikalam pradi repara tado shakabalanda. Hemo sapela vande sikemalanda ya. Thank you, Jesus. And, and, and before we round up, we will do more of it in the course of a meeting. But open your eyes, everyone. Listen to me. I'll make this altar call. I did a program last month called Jesus is Real. Because right now I discover that many believers are becoming secondary mission fields. And missionaries are becoming mission fields themselves. You are doubting. Is this real? Even ministers of the gospel man cannot boldly say that Jesus is the only way. Somebody said it depends on the way you look at it. <laughs> Your conviction is stretching. Remember in 2020, I said to us that when you have an opinion, you cannot be a rebel. It takes conviction for you to be a rebel. That's what is called functional deviance. And functional deviance are those ones who deviated. For a particular positive function. Jesus himself was a functional deviant. You cannot impose the will of the Lord. You cannot bring the culture of the almighty God in our society. You cannot say, thy kingdom come. That will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because you yourself, you are doubting. You are not really sure. I want to pray with you. Maybe because of an experience that you have. Or with what you are seeing around you. Your faith is shaking. Please come quickly. And say, brethren, pray with me. I need to be balanced in this faith. Quickly, quickly come. I know what he said concerning this session. Your legs are dangling. Something has happened to your faith. You're not as convinced as you used to be. Before the enemy cannot even suggest anything to you, but now he's having a conversation with you. You can host him for a long time. Satan is no longer afraid of talking with you for a long time. Because somehow your atmosphere has become calm, cold. It's not aggressive to him like before. I want to pray with you. Quickly, please come. Some of you, it's because you, you see yourself rising and you're falling and rising and you're, and you're doubting. Did I really meet him? Come. Holy Spirit, carry me Spirit, come with me, oh. Holy Spirit, come with me, oh. Holy Spirit, come with me, oh. Carry me, oh. Holy Spirit, come with me, oh. Carry me, oh. I speak to those of us who are in ministries I know that this one doesn't glorify you the one that makes you look like a serious big man of God is the one that you raise your hand and people fall and yet the initiation process you despise And that is why easily you are carried away as a minister. You think that you have people. You don't. Jesus says, the harvest truly is plentiful. It's plenteous. But the harvesters, the laborers are few. He said, pray ye unto the Lord of the harvest that he will send laborers, not members. Laborers, not members. And you cannot be a laborer unless you are convinced. Different between a sitting capacity and a sending capacity. We despise it. We don't think it's something that we should glory in. One day we were compiling testimonies after a meeting. It was a camp meeting some years ago. 
So while we are talking about people that got filled with the Holy Ghost, people that received miracles, many signs and wonders that day. And I just mentioned, and of course we have like 10 people that gave their life to Christ. And a friend of mine said, no, 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 Abel, let's do that one. We are talking about the testimony of power. Many ministers are like that. We no longer celebrate salvation because we don't know it. Meanwhile, your blood cannot even deliver a mosquito. Because it is simple, you think it is cheap. Because it is free, you think it is cheap. In this generation, we are hostile to simplicity and friendly to complicity. I want you from the depth of your heart, pray for these ones here. Why I hand over the mic to Pastor. Pray. If you love what the Lord has done this morning, pray. We are going to enjoy our meal together with these beloved ones in the subsequent sessions. Fill us, fill us, Lord, with you. 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 Fill us, fill us, Lord, with you.